Well, many American adults say they have a biblical worldview. But a new survey from the Family Research Council's Center for Biblical Worldview finds big inconsistencies on what that actually means. Only 31% of adults say it's very important for their faith to influence every area of their life. Among that number, 13% say they don't let their faith influence their politics, while 30% say it is a big influence. 55% say they really let their faith influence their personal relationships. 5% say they don't. President of the Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, joins us now for more. Uh, Tony, the disparity here is so interesting. What did you find most surprising about these findings? Well, Jenna, what I found most interesting, only 6% of adults in America have a what's called a biblical worldview, meaning we all have a worldview. All right, we all look at the world and analyze it based upon uh, an understanding. As Christians, uh, we should have a biblical worldview, meaning we interpret the events around us and respond to them based upon biblical truth. Only 6% of American adults, adults have that. But what was interesting in this is 51% uh, said they, they, they did have one, or they thought they had one, but they didn't. Um, but what that suggests to me is that they want to, they think it's important, and they admitted that this is something that I, that I think I have or I want. So what it tells me, Jen, is that we've got work to do in terms of helping people, teaching people how to operate with a biblical worldview, meaning living out the faith as a true disciple of Christ. Now, here's the key about this, is that a worldview is developed really between the ages of 18 months and 13 years. So the bulk of building a worldview, a biblical worldview in this case, really falls to the parents. The parents have to be intentional about developing a worldview, a biblical worldview in their children. Yeah, uh, Tony, this survey talks about sage cons and how they let their faith influence their lives. Can you explain to us what sage cons are and how they play, uh, the role they play in America today? Certainly can. Sage cons, spiritually active, governance engaged conservatives. It's kind of a, a new term, well, about a decade we've been using this term, working with George Barna, and it, it really kind of replaces evangelical, which has become kind of elastic. A, a sage con is one who is engaged in politics or in the culture because of their faith. They're compelled to get involved. That's about 6%, I'm sorry, about 9% of the adult population are sage cons. That's roughly 30 million Americans. But here's a key factor or key fact about sage cons. In this last election, 99% of sage cons voted in the 2020 election. That's unheard of and 97% of them voted for Donald Trump. In fact, they were almost 30% of Donald Trump's total vote. That says, and I think the left knows this, this is why evangelicals, sage cons, people who live out their faith are a problem for the political left because they can make a difference. And so their goal is to try to discourage them from being involved and living out their faith. That's one reason we see these attacks on faith and religious freedom, the ability to live according to our faith and teach our children the same. Uh, Tony, just about 45 seconds left here. We know that church membership and attendance is on the decline here in the States. How much is that affecting these numbers in this survey and, and people who say they hold a biblical worldview? See, I actually think it's the, the flip. I think the reverse is true is because our churches have not been teaching biblical truth, people have thought, what's the use? And so they've kind of drifted away. Those churches that are standing in the face of cultural opposition and preaching the truth of God are actually growing. So the message is preach the truth, stand on mm -hmm. it, and watch things happen. All right, Tony Perkins with Family Research Council. Uh, we will leave it there. Thank you so much, Tony.